As per tradition, we started out by taking some photos before we left with our annual anniversary cake and then we packed up the girls and got on the road. Andy Mini Mart. Hobo was in my lap for like the last two hours. I just went in to get these little cookie dough bites. These things are so good and I have not had one in probably three years. So I am being a rebel today and that is okay. So far so good. No one has thrown up. We're gonna finish up the rest of the trip. We should be getting there around like 5.30. And finally, after hours of driving, we finally made it to our Airbnb and it was so perfect for us for so many reasons. It had a washer and dryer when you first walked in and then it opens up into the kitchen and dining area with a bathroom off to the side. The hosts ended up leaving us a couple local gifts, which I thought was a really nice touch. And then through the dining area is a sliding glass door where you can see out to the backyard and the patio and the hot tub, which was perfect when we were outside in the hot tub. The girls could still see us. Then this is the downstairs bathroom, which they do have a bidet in both bathrooms, which I thought was the coolest thing ever. We were right across the street from an apple orchard. And this is the living room, which we spent a decent amount of time in. And then the first bedroom, which we did not use, this was pretty small, but it did have a nice closet full of a couple fun things for us to do if we got any rainy days. And then up the stairs was another full bathroom and two bedrooms. This is the bathroom that we used the most just because the shower was bigger. And then this is another bedroom that we did not use at all. And then this is the master bedroom. This is where we ended up staying every single night. The girls loved having this big backyard. It was so nice to test out if we liked having a fence or not. And spoiler alert, we freaking loved it and the girls did as well. The hot tub was a perfect touch. It was so nice to hop in there at the end of the day and just unwind. And the patio sets were pretty nice too. The first night we were there, we had this gorgeous, gorgeous sunset and we ordered some pizza, which was fantastic. We ended up ordering this pizza, I think two or three different times. It was a buffalo chicken pizza, but they had pizza sauce on it. I've never had anything like it, but it was really, really good. It was from a place called Bellows. So to start off our trip, we went to Minnewaska State Park Preserve first. And this was truly one of my favorite parks that we went to for this entire trip. It was so beautiful and because it is so large, we only got to do a small fraction of everything that you can see there. After walking down an old carriage road for at least a mile, we realized that we were not on the right path. So we finally got turned around and we did stop at the beautiful Austin Falls. It was gorgeous, so gorgeous. And then we walked up to the visitor center, which gave us a really pretty view of Lake Minnewaska. So you can walk all around this lake. There's so many trails and beautiful falls here, but due to time, because we wanted to see so many different things on this vacation, we left here and then we drove down to Stony Kill Falls, which there is no connecting path from Minnewaska State Park to this trail. So you have to drive to it. This was pretty, but it was a little disappointing because it was so dry, you could barely see a little drizzle of what was supposed to be the waterfall. After 
after finishing up here, we went to the Mahong Preserve, which was really nice because these parks are literally right next to each other, so close together. And we ended up doing the Lost City Escarpment Trail, which is a big loop that gives you some really beautiful views of the Shaogong Mountains. This trail was so bucky. The bugs were horrible here for some reason, but regardless, it was still really pretty. There were some really pretty rock formations and the girls loved climbing up them. Just look how freaking beautiful this view is like this was so beautiful there were so many different cutouts that you could just like look for miles at these gorgeous mountains We felt like we were in a race car going down these hills to get off the mountain because the road was so windy, the turns were so sharp. And then we went over the Rip Van Winkle Bridge again as we did a million times on this trip. Saw a little glimpse of the Alana State Historic Site, which spoiler alert, you're going to see us go there later in this video. And then we hung out in the hot tub for the rest of the night. The next day we drove to Copake Falls to go to the Taconic State Park to see Fish Bash Falls, which is a really unique waterfall because it's literally right on the New York, Massachusetts state line. You can access it from either state. We accessed it from the New York side. This is actually the highest waterfall in Massachusetts, which it's pretty, but it's kind of funny because it's not that big for being the highest, but I guess Massachusetts really isn't that big of a state. But regardless, this was really pretty and we really enjoyed this unique looking waterfall. Really close to that was High Falls Conservation Area, so we went there next. This was also another pretty easy waterfall to hike to. The trail's not that bad. The falls were really pretty. This is a pretty high waterfall, and the falls themselves are actually on private property, but you're able to get a really nice view of them. We walked down to get a closer look and we saw another really pretty waterfall that's definitely a lot smaller on the way and then in order to actually get close to high falls you have to climb over all these rocks and it's just not something I wanted to do with a dog because it's not worth risking their safety. Then it was time for our reservation at ROI. You do have to call in advance before you come here. It's not really a hike, it's more of a walk, but it is just a ton of huge, beautiful sculptures that are just scattered across 150 acres that you can take your time and look at whatever you want. We really enjoyed it because it was just something different to do and it was interesting to see the different things that people had made. This house was so cool because it was actually like moving the whole time that we were there. The girls even noticed it, which I thought was really funny. Then we came across these giant balls and you already know Larcy was losing her freaking mind trying to get to them. They weren't real balls but it doesn't matter, they were still the shape so she was super pumped about that. The girls had so much fun at this little section. They were like going 
in between the little tube things and the walls and they just thought this was like the coolest thing ever. It was really cute to watch them. We didn't even end up looking at all the sculptures because there was seriously so many. So what you're seeing here is literally just a fraction of all the ones that were here. Of course we found more balls so we freaked out again. Daddy had to try to shoot a basket. I thought this looked really cool. I just looked like, I don't know, like a fun, colorful maze. And then we found something that the girls really did not like. Larcy got to see her pretty little self in her reflection of these really cool towers and then I thought these clouds were just so cool so obviously we had to get some pictures in front of those and then the last thing we looked at was this truck that everything inside of it was reversed so that was kind of neat. This was the day of our actual anniversary, so we got some really fancy Dairy Queen and hung out for the rest of the night. Continuing US 9 South for two miles. The next day started out by going to Black Clove Preserve which you guessed it is on top of a mountain in the middle of nowhere and around a ton of windy roads. There's very limited space for parking here so I would definitely suggest getting here early and make sure that you know where you're going in advance because there's no service here. Honestly in the Catskills we did not have service at least half the time so you really have to make sure that you know where you're going ahead of time because we spent so much time driving to different places just to get service to figure out the directions to get to our next destination. Here's some behind the scenes of me setting everybody up before we start taking photos. I didn't realize this was on video so I thought this was cute to put in. So that was Plate Kill Falls and then we backtracked up the trail and we went over to Old Mill Falls which is definitely not as big and we weren't able to get a super nice view of it but regardless it was, it was really cute for being such a short walk you might as well go see it. We finished this trail and we were off to the mountaintop arboretum 
which I had really high hopes for and I honestly was unfortunately pretty disappointed. There are four different sections to this and the two main sections that are the cutest are not dog friendly but I just thought that maybe we'd see some really cute stuff at the other two and it just really wasn't the case so regardless it was still like a nice hike slash walk but would not probably recommend if you are bringing your dogs just because you can't see the super cute stuff here. We finished up here and went to Mount Rushmore. Uh, just kidding, we did not go to Mount Rushmore, but we did go to Pratt's Rock, which is known as New York's Mount Rushmore or America's first Mount Rushmore. You get really, really pretty views of Prattsville on this trail. We had such a hard time actually finding the carvings on the side of the rocks until like the last second. Devin turned around and he finally saw it and we're like, oh my gosh, we went completely the wrong way the entire time. But it was really cool. It's definitely a very unique experience, something really different to look forward to. Once we finished up here, we went to the hike preserve to see Rensselaer Grail Falls, which is just, it's crazy. This waterfall is huge. It's broken into three different sections. There's upper, middle, and lower. There's actually some ruins that were there since the 1870s, so definitely wanted to include that. But this waterfall was just like, it was so unique because you could not see it all from just one view. Like you had to go to all three sections to be able to see the entire waterfall. It was, it was pretty neat. And the last stop of the day was to John Boyd Thatcher State Park. This was up near Albany and this park was, it was beautiful. So off the Indian Ladder Trail, you see two different waterfalls. The first one is Outlet Falls. It's a little bit smaller, but still just as beautiful. We actually saw a snake right alongside the path right before we found the waterfall. So that was terrifying. And then the second waterfall that you come across is Mindlet Falls and this was also, it was just, it was beautiful. Like the views that you see here are just incredible. <laughs> We could have walked the whole trail, but again, due to time, we already did a ton of parks today. We did not. We just stopped at the two waterfalls. We called it a day and we headed back to the Airbnb for the night. The next day we went through the town of Catskill. Going through here is so cool because there's just statues of cats all over the place. It is, it's really cool. 
We started out this day by going to the North South Lake Campground to see the Catterskill Falls. This is definitely like the biggest, most well-known waterfall in the Catskills. So we saved this for a weekday with the intention of there not being many people. And unfortunately there were still so many people. This park was literally insane. It was like a horde of freaking people everywhere. So many steps. This is definitely not an easy trail to get to. And after we finished up this, we walked down to Christine Falls. which is accessible by the road, but it is illegal to stop your car alongside the road, so you have to head to it if you don't want to get a ticket, because we literally watched someone get a ticket, so they do patrol this road like crazy. having to hike back up the million steps that we just climbed down, we went over to Tinker Street, which was so cute. It's a mile of just cute little shops. I love places like this. And we wanted to go to the Woodstock Waterfall Park. We ended up meeting this guy who also was going to the same place we were, and he thought he knew where he was going, but he unfortunately didn't. So we just walked around this like random little park that you just saw the sign for and then we walked back down and we finally found it like this park is seriously tiny like it is the smallest little park and i think it's probably private because of the hotel you're not really supposed to be able to access it unless you're staying in the hotel but one of the guys that is working there saw us taking pictures of the girls up by the railing and he's like oh no it's fine like you guys can come on down like he literally walked us down to the waterfall and was taking pictures of us so that was really nice of him to do that. Then we went through the town of Socrates and their thing was horses. So there were statues of horses all alongside the roads. And we changed things up and we went to a dog friendly lighthouse. So this was something different and it was really fun. We actually ended up talking to that girl that you see walking in front of us. She also had a gold retriever with her. It was her grand dog and she was throwing sticks for him to play in the Hudson Bay but we did not want the girls to get wet and dirty, so we did not let them join. But we did get to see this lighthouse and it was really cool. Like you can actually book to stay the night here, or even if you just wanted to hike out a mile to the lighthouse, you could have like a cute picnic date here or dinner date here. There's tons of seating, it's open to the public. Like this is just such a neat experience. girls really enjoyed this nice view of the Hudson. Our last stop of this day was to Falling Waters Preserve. We did not do much of this hike at all because once we got to this first waterfall, the girls were super tired. So we just turned around and went back to the Airbnb.
we ordered our infamous pizza again and called it a night. We started the next day out at Glen Falls House, which seriously, if you're looking for a cute weekend getaway, literally stay here. Like, it's adorable, the cutest freaking little place. There's three main waterfalls here. There's Glen Falls and Bridalville Falls, which are these two right next to each other. There was this outdoor sauna that was so cool. I mean, obviously we couldn't use it unless we were staying there, but at least you can like look at it while you're just visiting. But you can stay here. They have live music here. There's a restaurant here. There's a pool. There's all kinds of stuff that you can do. Unfortunately, when we walked down to these first waterfalls, there was a ton of people there. So not ideal, but it was still really pretty. I just had to Photoshop everybody out of our photos. So those two are literally right there when you first park and then you have to walk to the third one which is Icebox Falls and this one is so much prettier. There was no one around. This was wonderful. Bugs were horrible. Other than that, it was great. I'm pretty sure you can also get married here. Like I said, this is just a really cool spot. If you're ever in the area, definitely come here. This day was finished off by going to the Alana State Historic Site. They did have a gift shop with all of that dog stuff, which I thought was so cool. The gardens here were literally beautiful. You can book an actual tour of the castle, but we didn't. We just decided to tour the grounds instead because it was rainy and it was yucky and the weather was really wishy-washy. There's five miles of carriage roads, like if you really want to walk at all, but we just kind of did the main area. This was the girls' first castle experience. On the way back, we stopped at a and because I didn't even know that was a thing. And oh my gosh, the food was so good. Obviously so not great for you, but it tasted wonderful. And that ice cream was 10 out of 10. This was our last night at our Airbnb. So we wanted to get back a little early just to kind of enjoy it as much as we could. And again, the girls loved the backyard. And we also fell in love with having a backyard too. So spoiler alert, we actually just fenced in our entire backyard for the girls for an early Christmas present and they love it. Next morning, we packed everything up, said goodbye to our wonderful Airbnb. It was so good to us. And we got on the road to go to our last few destinations before we headed home. We headed up north towards Albany in the city of Coho's to go see Coho's Falls. This is known as the Niagara Falls of Eastern New York and it's actually wider than Niagara Falls. So this spans a thousand 
feet wide. It doesn't look as big in the video as I promise it does in person, but this waterfall is huge. Obviously it was not completely full while we were there because there was such a drought. You can definitely tell that the water definitely spans over further than what you can see. Our next stop was Plotter Kill Nature Preserve in Schenectady. This honestly was really disappointing. So this is a view from the Upper Falls and we were able to see one more slight view of it but we walked down and around and we could not get a view of the Lower Falls or we could not even find Rhinex Creek Falls. Everything was just like so overgrown. There was trees in front of all the views. So we did find this cute little one and honestly this was like the highlight of our trip there. And then it was time for our final stop of our vacation, which was the county fair. So we enjoyed some time there and it was time to head home and our 15 year anniversary vacation was complete. We had truly such a wonderful time. It was a great experience.